Hello everyone, welcome back to Angela's Craft Room. Today I've got this slanted style card for you and I like this technique, it's quite effective and you don't have to have the stamp set that I've used. What you need is just a large a large stamp because on this white, on this very vanilla, the first piece, the quite large piece, which is that size, what we do is we just stamp all around the edges because the smaller piece is going to fit go in the middle of the card so if you once you stamped all around the edges if you've got a little bit that hasn't been stamped in the middle it doesn't matter because you're going to put this smaller piece this smaller slanted piece over the top so I really like this technique and I thought I'd just share it with you so that's the um, power power poppy winter wonderland I was just trying to think of the name of the stamp because I've only I haven't this is the first time I've used it and I must say I'm usually not a fan of photopolymer stamp sets but I got this these ones come from America power poppy so if you're over in the US of A you would be able to get them very easily they take a little time to get to me when I buy them and I do have the exchange rate so I only get a couple at a time but they are just absolutely beautiful and I'm really impressed with the stamps so let's get started pop that over there so as I said I'm going to do this one in rich raspberry so it's going to be 11 inches long, 4 and a quarter inches wide, and then scored at 5 and a half. And then you're going to need a piece of very vanilla, um, and that is measured 5 and a quarter inches by 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. So that's going to be the piece on the front. And then exactly the same size for inside the card, which is five and a quarter inches by three and seven eighths, and so it's exactly the same. So we're going to stamp inside the card first, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I just use my misty and as you know I normally would put it right down here but the reason being is I want to just stamp a little bit of the flower because it is quite a big flower it's a huge flower and that staining is quite normal with photopolymer it comes nice and white and clean but no matter how much you clean it it will um, stay stained so that's completely normal so I'm going to push that actually I'll put it up into that corner and I'm going to put my magnets there now I just have to decide which so I'm just going this is just for the inside of the card and I'm just going to stamp about there so that's going to go down pick it up now I'm just going to stamp that up with my rich raspberry see what a beautiful detailed image that is it's just gorgeous so 
so that's going to be the inside of your card so I'm just going to set that aside for a minute so that can dry and we'll adhere that in a bit later then I'm going to do the little piece first now this is going to be different again because I want to so I'll just grab my chamois and just wipe a bit of that rich raspberry off so we'll be doing you'll see me do this quite a few times and just give it a bit of a dry with my just one of my crafting pits of cloth now we just want to put that right up there and it's just hard to decide where I can put my magnets so I'll just line that up with the six at the top So then I'm going to have to peel that off and decide. So I'm just going to This is where it gets a bit tricky. So I'm going to have that about there, but as you can see, I'm not going. To be, I'm only going to be able to have one magnet down there. So I just have to hope. See, I don't think. Oh, I might get one little magnet just just sitting there. can see like if you it's going to lift the whole piece up now I did line that up at the six so let's hope that that's going to be in exactly the same place otherwise it's going to be a bit of a so we we'll just stamp that up again. Just don't want to miss any of it because if I can do it in one go, then I don't have to try and reposition it. And this is where it's different if you're just using an acrylic block on such a large stamp it does get quite difficult so I've just missed a little bit of the leaf there so I just want to see where that is so that's just that piece there so I can just where the magnet was so so then we can bring this down here now it's still quite wet so I've got to be careful that I don't touch the ink and 
what I was going to do was actually I will let that dry for a little bit just let that dry for a little bit then what we need to do is get a piece that's going to be on the outside and what we want to do mm. is stamp all the way around there and to do that and we've got to work out where because this is such a big stamp but it's perfect for this you want to see where your flowers are so like on here I've got the flowers down here because a lot of it's going to be covered with that middle section so What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll be able to put that up there and I'm just going to position that there and if you had a smaller stamp but still quite a large stamp it would work quite well for you. Then I'm just going to rotate it and those other pieces we've already stamped are drying while we're doing this which is good. And why I wipe this off each time is because if I don't when I put it, when I pick it up to put it down in the next position it's going to be showing all the ink so with this I can see where the flowers are and I just want to you don't want to stamp over what you've already stamped you're just trying to stamp round all the edges lifting it up carefully so just looking at where it's going to need to be inked up to cover so then I'm just going to put that down there so you're getting the general ideal I'm just turning it so we've only got about just two more corners don't want a lot of the leaf
I don't want a lot of the leaf showing on the edges. I'm trying to have the flowers, but it is hard with such a big stamp. So I'll stamp that up again. I've only got to do this two more times. And then it's just a matter of putting the card together. And I'm not worried that it's covering a lot of the card, so don't worry about that. At least we're getting the most of the um, where we want it covered, which is all around the edges done. Just trying to do it without overlapping. I might have to bring that down, just line it up at the six. It's just because my stamp. is such a big stamp I might have to have a bit of leaf on that corner there's nothing I can do about that Just re stamp that. So that's the stamping done, and we're just going to have to. I'm just being careful because that corner is still wet. So you can see there's some spaces, but that's how we just have to figure out where we're going to put that centre piece. So I'll just pop that over there and put my misty out of the way now. So hopefully I haven't got too much ink on my fingers. Just give them a bit of a wipe off. So then we'll just grab this grid paper. Now I'm just going to put that inside piece and you can't help but get ink on your fingers when you're doing it because you're just, you're just trying, I'm just trying really hard not to transfer it onto the card. So there's not that much glue left in that one, so we'll just grab a new one. Lucky I had one ready, just in case. It always happens when you're doing a tutorial. So that's coming out quite easy because it's a nice new one couple of bits in there. Now we 
we're just going to now I can move that down a little bit and I don't really want to put my inky fingers on there if I wasn't doing a tutorial I'd go and wash my hands So that's just got a little bit of glue seeped out there. So let's grab our trusty cotton bud and I'm just going to rub that down. So that's the inside of our card. It's quite effective looking and I might just get rid of this and then we're going to place and the thing is now I have to decide which way I want that to sit but what I will do first is glue this onto the rich raspberry so you just get a nice little frame of the rich raspberry. Just give it a couple of seconds for the glue to take. And just rub that. And I forgot to give you the sizes as we're going so I'll put the sizes down below in the comment section of the, the Rich Raspberry and, and the Fairy Vanilla. Just throw that one out. Then you've got to see where you want. So you can see that's going to cover quite a bit of it. So that, yeah, I want it that way because the other way it was going to show too much of a gap. So we just need to and then we're just going to apply this to on a slant now when I do the slant I try and look at the two top pieces I line them up with this one with the top of the card below, the stamped image below, and then so this point is touching this side, and then this point is touching that side. Now, hopefully, just so that just takes a few seconds for that to adhere. And you can see how effective that is and now we just need to pop that onto the front of our card
So I, when I'm doing this technique, I always use very vanilla. If you use Whisper White, it just doesn't, I don't think it looks as good with the Whisper White. But whatever base colour you use, you can use your very vanilla colour with that. So then all we've got to do is just add our butterflies, which I've already stamped. And that comes from the Stamping Up stamp set Papillon Potpourri. And there is a matching um, punch called Elegant Butterfly Punch. And I just bend up, bend up my butterflies. And just see, I usually do a couple of big ones and small ones because I never know. And then I'm just going to grab the petite pears. And it's always a challenge finding the stamp that I want. But... I wanted a I wanted a a thank you. This says sending many thanks. So if I just stamp that there, I might even add a third because it's only a small small image, I might just a small sentiment I might just add another butterfly down there like that so just grab my small acrylic block that I forgot to grab I'm so sorry about that so we're just going to pop that on there and I'll just Grab my little memento jet black ink and I'm just going to see if that's straight. It's a, it is a little crooked. just one of those stamps that it's just not um, just hasn't been cut straight so looking at it on the acrylic block it looks crooked Just take these butterflies off. So it did leave a little a little smudge. But I'll most probably cover that up with a little bit of rhinestones. Now with the big one, the big butterfly, I want to put a dimensional on underneath each of his wings. And take that off. Just I just like to bend his wings up a bit. And I'm just going to put that right up in the corner and press down on the dimensionals and then just bring his wings up a little bit like so. And then with 
these ones. I know I said I'm not a fan of the mini dimensionals, which I'm not. But for these small butterflies, they are very handy. But I find because they don't have the same height as the large dimensionals, I like to put two on top of each other. So they've got the same height popping off the card as the big butterfly. So just like the big butterfly, I'm just going to bend those up. like so and just one more because I've only got a little sentiment I'm just going to apply a smaller so this is a really good technique, this card, like you could use any stamps really, but you do need one large enough when you're stamping around that large piece of very vanilla that when you put your smaller piece in the middle, it's going to cover it. And that piece just doesn't want to play with me today. bit fiddly taking those backs off so there we go and we're just going to bend up his wings again and Pop that one there. Okay, so we'll just pop the glue away. And all that's left, I just like to put the smaller rhinestones on. Now I start at the bottom just so I make sure they fit. On the big butterfly I put three and on the smaller one I normally put two. So just one more on him. Just bend his wings up. Then I'm just going to pop two. On the two little ones. You don't have to put the rhinestones on. If you don't want to. But I think it... Um, just sets it off a little bit, lifts the colour. So I'm just going to press down on him and bend his wings up. Press down on him, bend his wings up. And then because I put a bit of a smudge up here, a bit of ink just fell on that. which will dry, that's okay. So, as I was saying, just because I got a little bit of black a little bit of black ink, I'm just going to put three 
rhinestones just across the top there and that's covered up my little mishap with my black ink so that's the card now we'll get all this rubbish out of the way so we can see the card that we've created today so that was that was with Rich Raspberry and this one was with Melon Mambo was the original one that I showed you at the beginning of the video and this is the one we've made today so I know the video has gone a bit too long but I really wanted to show you the whole card from start to finish so I hope you can use those techniques with the stamps that you've got in your craft room and thank you for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting.